Welcome to today's broadcast, you mighty earth-shaking, history-making, mountain-moving, giant-killing, demon-stomping, water-walking champion. I'm Pastor Glenn. I'm excited, energized, fired up on the Word of God. God's Word is designed to build you up and give you your inheritance that you have in Jesus Christ, the wealthiest person in the universe, made a will and then died and he has your name on it. It's called the New Testament of the Bible, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And because he could, didn't, couldn't stand the thought that some uh, crooked lawyer was going to cheat you out of your inheritance, namely the devil, he rose from the dead and now he oversees the covenant. He's the guarantee of the covenant, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, so that everything that God said can, that, that's yours can be materialized on this earth for you right now. Let me read you two scripture cards, one scripture card. Uh, Proverbs 13, 22, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Now, I'm going to make a comment on that. When you drive down the street and you see that they're having a, a, a car wash to bury some dude, he didn't leave an inheritance to his children's children. His children have to have a car wash to bury the dude. That's not right. That's not for you. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, not just his children, his grandchildren. And the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Proverbs 28, uh, 25 in Spurl's translation, whosoever trusts in Jehovah shall be made prosperous. Do you trust in Jehovah? Then believe for what the Bible says, that part of it, that prosperity is coming to you big time. The New English Bible says, he who trusts in the Lord grows fat and prosperous. Most of you already have half of that. You already grew fat. Now start prospering in Jesus' name. Isaiah 66, 12 says uh, the good news. This is like my, one of my favorite verses. I will bring you lasting prosperity. Emphasis for me on lasting not once, once in a lifetime, not a flash in the pan, not for a little while. I will bring you lasting prosperity. The wealth of the nations will flow to you like a river that never goes dry. The Colorado River, the Mississippi, the Nile, whatever, seem like it never goes dry. All right? So we're talking about, at this point, I'm talking about God giving you the desires of your heart. Uh, Psalm 37, 4, delight in yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. The first part of that, I guess, is verse 3, trust in the Lord and do good. That's where most Christians are. A and verily you shall be fed. So if you trust in the Lord and do good, you're going to have food on the table. You're going to have a roof over your head. You're going to have, a, have a, uh, a car to drive to get around. Okay, but verse four kicks it up a notch that not just trust in the Lord and do good. We all need to do that. That's elementary. That's basic. That's uh, being a Christian 101. But the next part kicks it up and says, delight yourself also in the Lord. That's a new realm. And if you do that, not only will you dwell in the land and be safe, not only will you be fed, but God's going to give you the desires of your heart. Wow, that's pretty amazing. Praise God. All right, God, when he told Abraham he's going to make him the father of many nations, that your seed is going to be like the stars of the sky, like the seed by, sea, sand by the seashore is, is innumerable. Your seed is going to be that way, Abraham. So Abraham had to start thinking about that. He had to start talking about that. His name was changed uh, to uh, the father of a multitude. His old friends say, hey, Abram, how's it going? Wait a minute. I'm not Abram. I'm Abraham. I'm not a, now just a righteous father. I'm the father of a multitude. Wow. He was confessing what God showed him. He was confessing the dream, the desire of his heart. All right? Now, your conduct is being decided by what you're believing right? What's the real you in the future? Are you going to be walking in integrity and uprightness and power and might and dominion and good health and a sound mind? Are you going to be a blessing to other people? Then you got to talk that today. Your conversation is a 
re- reflection, not only of what God did for you, but your desire, your dream, your fond expectation. What are you seeing? Are you seeing that God can raise you up? Can you see that promotion comes from the Lord, not from the east or the west uh, or the south, but God is a judge. He sets one up and puts down another. He's setting you up. The real you in the future is powerful. If you'll start speaking powerful words today, start thinking powerful word thoughts today, start speaking and thinking the mighty word of God that's building you up. Praise God. Cop, stop feeding and replaying those old pictures and disappointments and letdowns and failures. Don't play that stuff anymore. That, that's, a, that's a worn out soap opera that you used to play, you used to think that way. And if your mind is full of that kind of stuff, it's the hardest battle in the world to change that because you're in a rut. And when you're in a rut, you can't see anything else. You can't see over the edges of the rut. It's over your head. It's like a, it's like a grave with the ends kicked out. Okay, so what you got to do is you got to climb out of that thing and you've got to you got to climb out by using the word of God. Let the word of God be your your foot step, your the hole in the in the dirt where you can stick your foot and let it be your hand grip. Praise God. There's a verse that says that God picked me up out of the miry clay. He did that for me and put my feet on a rock and establish my goings. I was in the quicksand going down. I was really going down. Even the doctors at Kaiser Hospital told me I had two years to live in 1975. I was going down fast because of riotous living. But God got a hold of me. He took me out of that grave with the ends kicked out, the pit I was in, the quicksand I was in, and put my feet on a rock. And then I started cooperating with him. I started hiding the word in my heart and thinking the word with my, in my mind and speaking the word with my mouth. I started using the word of God in prayer and praise. I started knowing, uh, started realizing at church that some of the churches were singing fear and doubt and unbelief. They were talking about, let the mercy drops of God fall on me. There is no mercy drops. God has opened a, a floodgate to you when you receive Jesus as Lord. Your future cannot begin until you start feeding the vision, the dream, the desire that God wants more for you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remember, I just read a verse from the scripture card, and you should have the scripture cards on prosperity and on healing because you're going to run into a lot of people that are broke and sick in your life, and maybe that's you right now. It doesn't matter if it's you. You're going to come out of that in Jesus' name because you're putting the word of God first place in your life. And God is going to do one thing in your life. He's going to do one thing on planet Earth. He's going to Jeremiah 112. That's what. That's all God does. What does it say, Pastor Glenn? It says God watches over his word to perform it. He's on a sleepless watch watching his word to perform it. And if you're involved with God based on the word and his promises, then God's doing great things in your life. If, if God only does one thing on earth, watch over his word to perform it. But God, there's a million things going on, different things, Pastor Glenn, but it all goes under the category of some part of God's word. I'll tell you that. Your future cannot begin till you start feeding the dream that's in you, the desire, the vision, the, the goal that's in you, praise God. You're the only one that can stop it from occurring by doing nothing or staying where you're at. So if you don't get my scripture cards, then at least start writing down scriptures that you really like when you read the Bible. I told you I liked that verse, Isaiah 66, 12, I will bring you lasting prosperity because I see people and I've seen people for years that they get a little bit of money and then they do stupid things with it and then it's gone and then they're back where they started. I want lasting prosperity that never ends. I want so much that I can give away much. Amen. According to uh, 2 Corinthians 
9, verse like 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are great verses. The Bible says, let every man give as he is purposed in his heart. I have rarely been able to do that in my life. Uh, I've given a, a money, a lot of money, I think, and more over and above my tithe even, for sure, so that God could rebuke the devourer for my sake. But it hasn't been as much as I wanted to give. Wow. All right. So God's committed to your dream, to your desire, to your goal of becoming more. When you become more just as a man, just as a woman, even outside of God, you can then have more and do more and help more and love more and uh, bless people more. Right. But as a Christian, when we become more, God's already made you more. He made you a son of God, heir of God, joint heir with Jesus Christ, priest, king, ambassador, fellow laborer with God. He already did a lot of stuff for you when you receive Jesus as Lord. But when you become more by putting the word in you and exercising your faith and walking in integrity and being a doer of the word instead of a hearer only, you become more. And God's committed to you uh, to help you have bring your dream to pass. Peter's a good example. He was continually, you know, other Christian leaders say, making mistakes. I don't see that many mistakes in him. But people say, Peter was always making mistakes, always mouth and I, I don't see that. But anyway, people say that. So let's pretend that's true. Yet Jesus said, Behold, said Simon, Simon. I beheld Satan uh, coming to you, desiring to sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when you're converted, uh, it means when he received the Holy Spirit on the day of, uh, of Pentecost, he already was a believer in Jesus Christ. After I rose from the dead, you're going to be converted. You're going to be a son of God, heir of God, joint heir with Jesus Christ. You're going to strengthen the brethren. Luke 22, verse 31 and 32. Wow. Weak people can become strong when they internalize their, their internal picture, that God's painting a picture within you. Let him paint on the canvas of your heart. Let him take the blood of Jesus and wash the old canvas clean and let God start painting in you on you that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus that that no weapon formed against you can prosper that you're more than a conqueror through him that loved you I'm out of time saints I love you please stand with me in prayer and faith financial support even if it's just like the price of a couple couple cups of coffee a, a month go forth and steamroller the devil in Jesus name hallelujah Thank you, Pastor Glenn. Pastor Glenn's daily podcast is available on Spotify, his Pillars of Faith Christian app, and YouTube. I encourage you to support Pastor Glenn by listening to his podcast daily and watching his Bible teachings on YouTube. By sharing his content and increasing his viewership, we can get the gospel of Jesus Christ to more people across the globe. Let's encourage our friends and family to get inspired by God's Word with Pastor Glenn's teachings.